Hello to everyone who is watching this gaming let's play on YouTube. I am Jordan Mustang 87 and after weeks of waiting for me to officially make a start on my next gaming let's play, I've now decided I'm going to play through this. So by the time we get into the millennium into the new millennium at this point, Rockstar has now well and truly earned itself a place on the map. With there being the recent launch of the Grand Theft Auto series, and by 2000 they had launched another series, more specifically the Midnight Club series, and ultimately the game we are now playing is the second instalment of a much-loved racing game franchise that would eventually go onwards to basically dominate the 2000s. And as you can see by the title, the game we are now playing is Midnight Club 2. So this game first came out on the PlayStation 2. It then also came out weeks later on both the Xbox and on PC, well, Windows PC, to be exact. And the Americans, of course, got the PlayStation 2 version first. They basically got all versions first because, well, Rockstar, as you might have guessed, is, of course, an American company. So the Americans got this game, first of all, on April 8th in 2003, and then we here in Europe would get the PlayStation 2 version by May. So in other words, less than a month later, May 2nd to be precise. Then the Xbox version came out on June 4th, 2003 in North America. Then we Europeans would get the Xbox release on June 20th, and then the Windows version was released on July 1st in 2003 in North America, and we Europeans would officially get this game by July 11th. I should also mention on the Midnight Club wiki page for this game, July is misspelt. Just figured I'd point that out. So, developed by Rockstar San Diego, published by Rockstar Games, and distributed by a company called Take-Two Interactive. And the game engine it uses is basically the Angel Studios game engine, which I'd assume these days is known as Rockstar San Diego. Or so I would think. But anyways, yeah. So, pretty much tells you everything you need to know. I should also get to work on putting out my name in this profile as well. And if I press shift, you will get capital letters. And ultimately, as you might have guessed by now, if you've been watching me long enough, you will probably know that the name I always use is my first name, which is Jordan. So that's going to be accepted. And now. We get to move on to the fun part. So, on the main screen, we get the career mode, and ultimately, to start with, we've only got one vehicle ava available to us, and that is called the co kart, which is the only vehicle that we have available to us at the moment because, well, the other vehicles we earn throughout the course of career mode. And I'm fairly certain this car is realistically resembling to the Ford Escort RS Cotsworth, which, believe it or not, is arguably one of my favourite rally cars of all time. And not just because, well, it was part of the Group A, well, and not just because it was part of the Group A era, but also because it was, uh, 
part of the WRC into the early years of what we now know as the World Rally Car Era, which, believe it or not, has been ongoing since 1997, officially, and they're still youth, and they're still in that era even to this day. So these are the settings we get: so career mode, arcade mode, networking mode. Of course, this was. Uh, very much in its infancy when uh, network connections were starting to become a thing, or if you want the simplicity term, when online multiplayer was becoming a thing at this point. We also get the race editor mode, and we can basically choose whichever race we want. Of course, I'm probably not going to show this off because it doesn't really have any purpose progress-wise. And the cities we get to go to, the three cities, to be more specific, we get to go to Los Angeles, Paris, and Tokyo. Oh yeah, I should also mention that, well, yeah. Also, when we go back to the uh, file choosing screen, we also get progress on how far we've come in the game. Which probably is something I'll be showing off quite regularly. I'm also still not used to the feature of how, well, when you back out of the main menu, you basically go back to the uh, loading file screen, which uh, is a bit baffling, if you're asking from me personally, but yeah. And we also get the uh, options mode as well. Unfortunately, however, we cannot edit the sound options from here. The sound options can only be edited from the uh, pause menu in either career mode or in arcade mode. And I probably will have to sort this out in a way because, well, if I just go into the main screen, well, if I just go into arcade mode now, because, well, career mode will basically just throw us straight into our first race. Basically, the options mode is here. And we also get the audio options here as well, which uh, I think is uh, important. So I'm going to turn the music off. So, because I would imagine... YouTube will basically send me to living hell and back again if I don't turn the music off. I'd imagine most music in this game is copyrighted. I'm also going to turn down the effect, the effects volume as well and also uh, get a bit more sound bite out of my microphone by basically turning all of these down. Music, of course, is off. Music selection all. Well, I'll just leave that as it is. But this is where we uh, edit our audio options. Also, if you don't want to immediately throw yourself into a race, then, well, just do what I did, and let's go straight into arcade mode, then back out. And then, once you've done everything you need to do, you've basically got everything you need. This is also where the options are available as well. And we can choose brightness. Of course, I'm not going to mess with any of these because, well, I think all of these are fine. Also get cinematic camera, which I'd assume is a replay option. And transmission choices, well, I'll probably head back to that now. So, exit to front end. For some reason, you have to go on the pause menu in the game itself to officially turn off the in-game music for whatever reason, which is a little bit bizarre, but I'm going to assume it must have its reasons. And also, we get some transmission options as well. We get multiple, in fact. So we get three different types of transmission options, automatic, and manual, and well, the one I'm going to go for, because it makes the most sense to me, is well, 
I'm going to go for manual configuration A because this seems to make the most sense to me and also because, well, I commonly use the toggle sticks to steer, accelerate and brake. I like to lay my foot on the gas with the uh, toggle stick, basically. And well, vibration. Don't really think I need any vibrations. So I'm just going to turn that off because, well, I really don't want my arms to rattle. Because this is a very challenging game. Or it's a challenging enough game. To put it more simply. And yeah, okay. So I think that's about everything I need to show off. Also with arcade mode we do get a choice between default and custom settings, but probably not going to show that off until the game is done. Also need to remember that I cannot just back out of the main menu, I need to basically use the arrow keys to move up and down on my options, and also to avoid myself from going back to the file choosing screen, this is probably what I need to do. So yeah. Okay. So I think that pretty much explains everything you need to know about this game in terms of its default settings. And now we are going to make a start on this game in what will be our first segment of Midnight Club 2. See you all for the beginning of this game. Peace.